Good morning, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brett, and you're watching Useful Aircraft. That's Newt going out and raised somewhere running around the garage. It's 620 and about 93 degrees. Sorry about the fan noise, uh, just something we gotta do right now. I wanna show you something I've been working on for the past couple weeks off and on. It's a design that I've had on a shelf for a while, something I came up with, but it's always needed some refinement. And now that I've found a design language that I like in terms of the aesthetic, and also some functional systems engineering integrations that I like. Um, it's something that I brought up to, uh, to what, what I consider my modern spec now. This is my forward swept mini wing. It does have a slight forward sweep to the wing. It's a very simple flying wing. It does have some um, unique attributes to it in that as a flying wing, it does have a short coupled pitch moment. Um, what do I mean by that? I'll show you on my drag queen, for example. On this airplane, you have a more conventional system with an elevator back here and your propeller would be mounted here. The center of lift on the airplane, which is the center of all upward aerodynamic forces, will exist on this airplane about 25 to 30% of the uh, wing cord, which is the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing. So approximately here will be the upward acting moment of all the uh, lifting forces. The center of gravity, which is the center of all forces acting on the airplane, pulling the airplane down, is gonna be in front of that. The airplane flies basically like a teeter-totter with the center of lift providing the upward motion, the center of gravity pulling the nose of the airplane down, and to balance that out, the elevator is providing any counteracting force. If the center of lift, for any reason, moves forward in front of the center of gravity, you've lost control and the airplane is gonna swap ends. Um, that's why they say that an airplane will fly poorly with a uh, forward center of gravity, but it'll fly once with an aft center of gravity. It's obviously those limits, they have to be respected. How does that impact a flying wing? Well, in a flying wing, the same rules apply. The uh, weight here is by and large forward. The battery lives about here. We have our receiver and uh, speed controller uh, mounted here and a motor there. So center of gravity on this airplane is very close to the leading edge. I put these index marks, those holes, give you an approximation of where the center of gravity should be. And when the airplane has a battery in it, you can see you put your fingers on the holes and the airplane will rest in a level flight attitude. This airplane has a proper center of gravity as she sits right now and is ready to go flying. The, also helping the pilot in getting this airplane ready, I'll show you this. I've added some indice marks. If you notice on my rudders, you can see these marks here. That circle indicates uh, proper takeoff trim setting. The uh, two lines indicate neutral trim. And that gives you an idea where you should have, if you have the pitch trim set here, and if you have the center of gravity on point, you're gonna be in a high probability of having a good flight. The issue with flying wings, and something that has to be borne in mind, as I talked about the difference between a conventional airplane, more along the lines of the drag queen, versus a flying wing is the distance between the center of lift and the aerodynamic center of the elevator. If you look at this distance, which in aviation terms is known as the arm, that arm on this airplane is probably 14 inches. The elevators are combined with the ailerons on the flying wing and as a combined flight control, it's referred to as an elevon. The center of the aerodynamic forces generated by the elevon is going to be about here, which is only probably three inches away from the center of lift. So the same elevator input on this airplane at a given airspeed will have much less effect than the same elevator input on this airplane at a given airspeed. How do you get the elevator response that you want in this airplane? Simple, speed. 
you got to have airflow over the wings. That's why this is not necessarily a beginner airplane, in my opinion. The forward swept mini wing, you know, and, and wings like this, they require a good amount of forward speed in order to have the pitch control. I wouldn't define this as a hard airplane to fly, not at all. We'll take it out, bring it to the park on a calm day, and I'll show it to you. The airplane flies like it's on rails. Where this airplane can get into a pickle is coming down into a tight space to maneuver and not having the pitch authority to escape perhaps an obstacle in front of you. It may be counterintuitive, but you'd be forced to accelerate in order to command the pitch authority to set the attitude so that the wing may bring the airplane with excess power out above and away from the obstacle you're trying to avoid. For that reason alone, I would say that flying wings similar to this are more of an intermediate airplane. Let student pilots, pilots starting out, learn how to fly in a more conventional style airplane where, and again, in this airplane, which happens to be a pusher configuration, or in similar training airplanes like the average Piper Cub and whatnot, where you have a tractor configuration, the characteristic both those designs share is that the elevator is in the induced flow of the propeller. The wash of the propeller washes over the elevator, giving you essentially power steering. No matter what the natural airspeed of the airplane, no matter what the actual speed of airflow over the wings is, if I cob the throttle, give it all she's got, and pitch the elevator, I will bring about a pitching movement because there is airflow coming off of that propeller causing that pitch moment. The flying wing doesn't have that. There's, there's nothing wrong with this airplane. It flies beautifully. All flying wings share this characteristic. In a pusher configuration, the only airflow over the wings is organic. So it is essential you maintain that airspeed. Far more so than in conventional airplanes, it is essential that this airplane be launched directly into the wind every time. Can it handle crosswinds? Absolutely it can. Can it penetrate, uh, you know, Shearing air, absolutely it can. But the only thing that's gonna save you during those moments of shear is airspeed. The, um, you know, as a metaphor, for example, if you threw the airplane with a forward speed at the moment of release at 10 knots, if you throw that on a zero wind day, at the moment of release, it has 10 knots of airflow over the wing. If you fly on a day when there's a 10 knot wind as well, if you launch into the wind, before you even throw it, it has that 10 knots of airspeed coming over the flight control surfaces while it's in your hand. If you input another 10 knots of forward speed at the moment of release, you now have 20 knots of airspeed and even more control. Simultaneously, if you turned and launched the other direction with a tailwind, and so now you have 10 knots of wind blowing at the tail and you throw it forward, at 10 knots, the speed over the ground that you impart upon the airplane, when it mathematically meets the tailwind at 10 knots, the net result is these flight controls have zero airflow. It is no different than dropping this airplane and expecting it somehow to recover. It doesn't stand a chance. There's no way, especially in an airplane designed with, uh, with a small motor, lower than a you know, uh, one to one thrust to weight ratio, that you're gonna be able to get the forward airspeed you need in order to recover. Even in an airplane that has a greater than a one to one thrust to weight ratio, in a configuration such as this, without any either vectoring or flight controls in line with the uh, slipstream of the propeller, you're gonna have difficulty maintaining any attitude control. It basically comes down to a uh, space capsule problem. You would have difficulty in maintaining attitude control before the application of thrust induced the airflow to give you organic flight control using the, uh, the Elevons in this case. Anyway, like I said, it's a very simple design. It uses the same design philosophies that I've uh, used in the past in my other aircraft, as you've seen. It's a quick and easy build. The surprising thing about this airplane, as this is assembled right now, you can put this together in less than 30 minutes. It is really simple, and it's something I'll show you the build video uh, I got to make some changes and, and get something together. I'll have that out to you guys in a couple of days. Anyway, let's take it out to the park and show it to you. I'm excited to share this. 
it's the forward swept mini wing. I don't have any other names for it. If you got a name or something you suggest, I'd love to hear it. Oh, to show you some of the insides. Um, I did break one thing with uh, my average design philosophy, and that's as this is a sub 250 gram air airplane, and it is. It weighs, uh, as it's sitting right here, 228 grams. It, uh, I do not have any 18350s to fly it with, so I'm using a, uh, a LiPo battery. I only have two of these things, so it's, um, it's something that's not very common. This happens to be a 3S 850. You can see it there. It fits into the forward fuselage just like that. You can see the ELRS receiver. It's again, the Beta FPV PWM receiver tucked in just like that. I do make a point of separating all of the RC servo uh, lines and also the input from the BEC are above the wing in this compartment here. All of the high current lines going to run the ESC, and in this case, they're only the DC lines, they are below the wing in this section here. Why do I do that? You will eliminate a good deal of your electromagnetic interference, servo twitchiness, and problems that you may be having with your airplanes by keeping those lines as far apart as possible. Here you can see they may only be separated by three quarters of an inch, um, but that is, that, that's plenty in this case. My ESC, I have it, you can see there, it's mounted externally on my uh, motor mount that I've designed. That's 3D printed, it is PLA, that's just Overture white PLA. That's uh, probably overkill. That's a uh, 30 amp ESC, that's uh, running a 1407, 3500 kV motor, and that happens to be turning a 3052-3 uh, prop. It's a tiny little airplane. It's loads of fun to fly. It speaks the uh, kind of the same design language that I, I've done on my other airplanes. The, uh, you know, forward fuselage closeout here incorporates my sliding vent design. I do have a couple of 3D printed tabs to hold it in the back end. It ends up being a very clean little airplane. The um, ESC, like I said, just zip tied back there. It's using conventional hardware that comes with these motors um, in order to secure it. You're not even sourcing screws. Um, the servos exist through the wings. They have wiring cutouts for the servo cables going in couple of popsicle sticks form bracing for the main wing um, as the wing is split so it can be uh, folded up into a uh, small container for shipping. I love the looks of the airplane. It's, uh, it's fun to fly. It's, it flies just so straight and so true. I mean, uh, on a calm day, it will penetrate on a windy day. You do have to pay particular attention if you're flying on a particularly windy or gusty day turning from into the wind, coming back around to the downwind, because again, that, that shear and that, that loss of airspeed over your elevons, the first place you'll notice it is your pitch control. So keep your airspeed up, but otherwise you're gonna have a great time. That's forward swept mini wing. Again, I'll have uh, more details in the build video coming out here, uh, probably in the week or so ahead, but um, let me know your thoughts and comments below. Please give me a like, do share it with your friends if it's something you think they might be interested in. And yes, I hear uh, the people that have asked me reached out either here or messaged me otherwise. You know, I'll probably end up putting together some kits. It, it, at some point, it, it's not a priority in the summertime when it's, you know, when I'm sweating like a, I don't know, it's 92 degrees out here now and, and humid and it's just not a place that I want to spend my time. Um, in the winter, when I can be out here all, all day, yeah, absolutely no worries. We can probably figure something out. Maybe I get some of these kits out to you guys if that's something you're interested in. If not, I'm not doing that for this purpose. I'm doing it because it, it's for the love of the design. It's for a community that's given me so much. I want to share this. I want you guys to steal some of these elements of my design language and incorporate them into your airplanes. Um, they work. They're successful. They're fun. This is, I think it's a good looking airframe. It's a, it's a good flying airplane. It's tiny, it'll sit in the front seat of your car. You grab your radio, toss a battery in there. It's sub 250, you can fly it anywhere you want. 
Anyway, that's it. We'll cut over to some flying. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. Give YouTube its love, and we'll get on from there. Thanks for your time. Alrighty. Flight control check. CG. Touch forward on the marks. Arm it. Oh, like it's on rails. So that's just below half throttle. Just cruising smooth. No pitch oscillations whatsoever. Just a beauty. There we are. Bit of a plunk, but uh, I am very happy. Oh, wet grass. Well, I am very happy. She flies well. Anyway, thanks for coming out this morning. We'll see you around.